God all of my faults. And he saw my needs. The Lord is good. Amen. Amen. song was the same grace that John Perkins just talked about. The scripture has already been read. If you would turn your Bibles to Isaiah, the 61st chapter. As you do that, I want to thank God uh, just for the opportunity and the privilege to be here. I am so glad that I can be real with God. Amen. And I am so glad that CCDA has leaders that are real before God. And uh, I'm glad that from my background, we had what I call Christian stars, those who like to be elevated, to be seen before the people as being greater than thou. And I am glad that the CCDA have people, leaders, people who want to follow God for real. As Andy kind of gave our testimony and his testimony and our testimony. And, and I, and I want to say that Andy and my relationship is real. Hey Amen. You know, we can buy t-shirts and, you know, we can buy banners and come up with themes. And, but I really thank God for my partner in ministry. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's real. Amen. And, and I know that uh, in some of the, with, with Glenn Curran and Raleigh and with uh, uh, Coach and uh, uh, Casey, uh, uh, that it looks different now. Yeah. Uh, but there are seasons that the Lord has that we have to adjust to. And it's all right, because he is God. It's painful, but he's still God. And his grace will cover. As a Christian community developer, if you will, and most of all a Christian, these are some of the challenges that I had as, as uh, going down to our community. And, and I just want to throw them out. Some of you may be struggling with some of the very same things and, uh, or have and got over it. But in reference to the three R's, when we were called to go to relocate in the community, I was a black man going to the black community. I, I thought I had it, you know, figured out. <laughs> but there was a rude awakening. <laughs> Things had changed so much uh, from the time that I got out of the world and in Christ and, and then back into the community. It was a whole different ball game. <laughs> but when I was going down, I, I, I kind of saw myself as going down as a hero. 
you know, I'm, you know, you know, you get all the fanfare and, and people are happy that you're going down and, and, uh, you know, you get the opposition, you know, but, but, you know, you can take some of that, but Christ, Christ said that was going to happen. And, uh, uh, but in a sense, I had it all together. I fought. Uh, but God had to show me that I had to humble myself and I had to learn from the people in that community. You've got to do the same thing. In, in the areas of redistribution, some of the challenges that I had, and some of you may have them, was, was the, the temptation to patronize people Ministering to the poor is big business. Amen? Amen? The government has made billions of dollars setting up programs, ministering to the poor, but most of the money stayed within the bureaucracy. And even as believers, and I know many of you will be challenged with the same thing. And, and sometimes we, uh, if we're not careful, if we're not led by the Spirit of God, we can find ourselves patronizing people and saying all the bad things that is in the city. And there are some bad things. But you know what I found out? By going there, there's a lot of good things in my community. <laughs> So I kind of struggle with that. And another challenge in reference to redistribution I see is as God has opened some doors for us to uh, uh, have relationships with uh, white churches in, in the suburbs. And, and uh, uh, the challenge was that there was so much focus on the city <laughs> Amen. That uh, that sometimes we we can't see that the suburbs on, need to be reconciled too. Mm -hmm. Amen. I have some of my friends who who are involved in the ministry, and and, and, and they they have the same problems that the people in the city have. They manifest themselves different. In the suburbs, they're a little more hidden, but they're still there. And, and I'm praying that, that God would give us creative ideas and not only to minister to the city, but ask the Holy Spirit to guide us how we can reach people in the suburbs. That was a challenge for me. Another thing, if, if I wasn't careful, I, I, I would see white people as the providers. That they were going to solve our problems. I'm talking about what I struggle with. In the area of Oh, let me say that, that a reconciliation and partnership in with the white churches, I found out that we need to have a, a kind of when I say it, a, a view of, of ministering to the whole body of Christ. And see, I found out that the problems you know, the Lord already told us this, but, you know, we have to keep finding out. <laughs> uh, uh, I found out that the problem in the church is not with God. All right. <laughs> uh, the problem is with man. The problem, because God has demonstrated his love, like John said, and, and we ought to just respond. When I was coming up 
one of the first questions that I asked my pastor, I asked my pastor, I said, uh, Pastor, why do white people worship there and black people worship there? And, and he told me, he said, he said, you know, that's, that's just how it is sometimes. But that didn't set well with me. Because the God that, that people told me about was a God who can, who can reconcile everybody. And, 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 and that seemed to put a limitations on my God who we say can do anything but fail. And the scripture says, his divine power has given us everything we need pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us. That tells me that God is sufficient. It said that his precious promises was given so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil. Great thing, <laughs> integrity, vulnerability, and brokenness. You know what? That means different things to different people. Hey Amen. Sometimes you can think that you're broke. You know, but you're really not broken because you're defining according to where you think brokenness is. I will do the same thing. But we need to compare these words to what the scripture says and not to individuals. We will always look good around each other. In our scripture text, this message was directed to a people who had, who had seen personally, uh, uh, the people of God, uh, uh, who had seen personally and had ex experienced what the wages of sin would do. This message was to people who were coming out of bondage and, and God was ready to restore his people. It, it, people who had been in captivity. People who had seen uh, uh, cities uh, uh, destroyed. Women raped. Robbery. They saw the priests who would compromise. Prophets that were on the take mm. and injustice all around. But now, God was ready to, res to restore his people. See, that, that, that answer that my pastor gave me didn't set well with me because I know that God is bigger. <laughs> that some of you probably have had some of those same thoughts. God, why are you not moving? Well, you know, look at all this mess. You know what I mean? In the Bible, you find Gideon, who had been told all these stories about God. But here he is, fixing his food, hiding from the enemy. He heard all the stories. You know, that's how Christianity kind of looked today to the world. You know, all of these stories about this wonderful God. But let me tell you something. We, the people of God, are the, the only one who has the solution to seeing this world transformed. Amen. If it's not us, it won't happen. Amen. Amen. But God was ready to restore his people. And Isaiah, he, he sees himself as part of the solution. This scripture passage is the same passage that, that Jesus quoted when he was in Nazareth. And he quoted part of it, then he just sat down. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. This message was to a people who was ready to go. People who would be led and controlled by the spirit of God. John Perkins told us what, what God wanted us to do this morning. And this passage of scripture tells us how we can do it. We need to 
the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. We need God to pour out His Spirit. But he would only pour out His Spirit. He would only use people who are broken. Those who would, who, who want integrity in their lives. Those who are, who are vulnerable, who are exposed. We have too many secret agent Christians <laughs> trying to impress each other. But before God, the Bible said that everything is naked. You see, we are already exposed. But God will use a people who would yield to the Spirit of God. Are you one of those? <laughs> Amen. As you go back to your community, will you go back and say, well, I was at the conference and I learned all these wonderful things? <laughs> but will you go humbly every day saying, God, I need you. I can't do this without you. <laughs> The spirit of the sovereign Lord was on me, Isaiah said. Jesus quoted that and he sat down. And, and, and Isaiah in a limited, this referred to him in a limited, limited part. That now he can partake of the spirit of God and God could use him. And that's, that's exciting, y'all. You, we, we, we ought to be jumping for joy for, just for the very thought that God would use us. We were dead in trespasses and sins. The scripture said, and such were some of you. When he named all of those dirty dozen and nasty nines. And such were some of you, but you are washed. You are cleansed. It ought to excite us that God would even use us. Amen. He has sent me, you, to go in the power of the Spirit. He has, this, it says, and it says, he has anointed me. Anointed is one of those, uh, one of those charismatic words. <laughs> too charismatic charismatic charisma grace <laughs> we need the grace of God it's okay to be charismatic it's okay to wave your hand every now and then yeah. <laughs> coach coach <laughs> man, go, he goes so I, I know the spirit of God is on this bro because he talks so fast <laughs> And I know you can only do that in the spirit. <laughs> Amen. And he's accurate, you know, sometimes. You know, that's the spirit. <laughs> he has anointed me. The Bible said that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What did he send us to do? So the first thing, if we're going to be used of God, is that we need to go. Right. We need to go. People want, well, what should I do? And what, look, go. <laughs> well, I want to know what the will of the Lord is. Go. Oh, just, just go. <laughs> and be obedient. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me, that ought to humble you, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness prisoners. You see, the reason why Isaiah didn't have to go to Bible study and all that stuff, you know, first before he went, because he had already seen the devastation. In the 
Christian church, man, we got Bibles on computer. We got, we've got all this information. But where's the power? Where's the power? Not only should we, we, we should go and obey, but we should, when we go, we ought to proclaim in the spirit. Whether you're talking, if you're tutoring somebody, you ought to be in the spirit. Whether you're preaching or whatever you do, you need, you and I need the spirit. Now people think, when you talk about the spirit, you're talking about these warm fuzzies. No. We're talking about the third person of the Trinity, God. He was there in the beginning. He was. He that will teach you and lead you and guide you. He, not a it, he's not a feeling. He's God. That's right. So when we go, we ought to proclaim in the spirit. And we've got two messages. We got, we got, a, we got the message in verse 2. It said it's to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. Two messages. One is one of salvation and one is wrath. That if you don't repent, the wrath of God is going to come down. And that has to be taught right, you know. You got some who, who, who pour out more wrath than grace. Because we are called to love people. Because it tells us in verse 8, he said, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. Our God loves everybody. So we ought to proclaim in the Spirit. Now, now, Isaiah was to go, but, but, but not only should we go and we proclaim in the Spirit, but we all should also receive from the Spirit. We, sometimes we can get so involved in the ministry that we won't take time to get along with the Lord. Some of the best times in the world is time along with God. Oh, when it's just you and Him. You don't have to put on an act. It's just you and God. In 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1 and 3, it said, See, God sends us because we got, we, we've got all the information that we need. <laughs> we've got everything we need. And he sends us And after he sends us, and after we expend ourselves working with people, then we need to be nurtured. We need to be revived within ourselves. And God, it, it says in the scripture that he, 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 he wants us to comfort. And you can only comfort people. The scripture said, in first, it, said it said, 1 Corinthians 1 and 3. It says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. When we give out, we need to go back and say, Oh God, refresh me. Look what he said he's going to do in Isaiah. Look, see, the people of God need to go back. And it, said, it said to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, Jerusalem, the people of God. And this is what God does. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Man, you, you, <laughs> have mercy. Boy, you can give yourself out so much. Amen. And, 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 and you, especially when some of those people who you thought that was going to change it, the moment you witnessed to them. <laughs> and, 
and, and you find out that, that it's not an apocadabra. You need to go back and get refreshed. He will give his people, he will bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. Pastor Wayne, I, you know, God has put on my heart I, when we was in the pastor's uh, track and you were speaking and, and, and I just want to say to you that the move that you and your wife have made, it's all right. Amen. Glory. It's all right. <laughs> there are seasons. Yeah. Amen. It's all right. You and your wife and your family have proved. Hello. Yeah. You don't have to prove it to anybody. We know by your life <laughs> you reconcile. Yeah. It's all right. From the Spirit of God. And John and Vera may and pray for them as, as they grieve in their family, as they grieve. It's all right to grieve. <laughs> It's all right. But don't grieve as people who don't have hope. But grieve, get it out. From the Spirit of God. Because only He can comfort. I just love the way Sister Perkins just came. She reminded me of one of my old sisters. She just waved her hands. Amen. I know, and she was saying, I know God going to take care of me. I'm telling you, it's all right to wave your hand. Yeah. Now look, after we go and be obedient and we proclaim in the Spirit, then we need to walk in the Spirit by faith. We need to go to our communities by faith, knowing, not maybe, knowing that God is going to do exactly what he said he will do. Now, it may not work out the way we think it will, but God is faithful. Look what it says here. It said, and he said, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Look at all the they will. We got to walk by faith. He said, they will. No, he don't say when you go back to your, you might. He said, they will rebuild. It's already done. In Jesus' name. Amen. But we have to be broken people. God will use people who are broken. They will. You know, sometimes we wonder, well, where's the money going to come from? And, you know, and all that stuff is already there. It's there. Let me see, y'all don't believe me. It's there. And God don't have any problem getting it to his people. Have mercy. You will be called priests. You will be named ministers of God. You will feed on the wealth of the nation. Everything belongs to God. Amen. A sinner could be holding it right now. Amen. But it's still God's. And he could get it to you. But we've got to believe it. And then there are people in the body of Christ that have abundance. Don't hold on to it. You can't take it with you. Be wise stewards over it, but you can't take it with you. You will feed upon the wealth of the nations. God has worked through this conference, and, and, and the scripture says that Skip Long from John Riley Partnership was sharing with me how the government came to them and asked them to write a grant because they see the integrity in Jobs Partnership around. Amen. We will feed upon the nation everything we need. God has it. Amen. And he don't have any problem giving it to his folks. 
So we need to walk by faith when we go back. And even in that, the Bible, in verse 9, it talks about our descendants. Their descendants will be known among the nations. And we need to be transferring. One day, Gordy and John won't be here. Hello. Amen. Leroy Gill is checking out one of these days. Hello. <laughs> Amen. You going to check out. Unless the rapture come. Amen. But you checking out. <laughs> Amen. So we need to be transferring this to our children. Because our God loves justice. We need to be holy people because God is holy. And it tells us as I close, when we go back to our communities, we need to be planted in Christ. Yes. We need to be planted in Jesus. It says in verse 11, For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seed to grow, so the sovereign law will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. How? Through his people. Who is these people that they, they are calling us righteous? And, 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 and who are the oaks of righteousness? When the church, when the church really take uh, their right stand in the world, when they come together in unity, the world has to take notice. When we're loving God with all of our heart, our mind, and our, they have to take notice. Black, white, Hispanic, whatever. The people of God. Jesus said, by that people will know you are mine. So we need to be planted in Jesus. Are you planted in Jesus? <laughs> if you're planted in Jesus, you're going to make it. John talked about righteousness. Amen. You see, when we go back, we cannot go back depending on our righteousness. But we need to depend on the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are his. And to do that, we need to go in the spirit. We need to proclaim in the spirit. We need to walk in faith in the spirit. And we need to be planted in Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen.